I was thinking about two easy examples, okay? Um, one of which you can pretty much just quote for me, and the other one of which I won't write just yet, it'll be a little more tricky, okay? I'd like us to expand this. I've deliberately not put any funky numbers on the A and the B, so it's going to be easy. If I'm on the, including zero, zero, one, two, three, fourth row of Pascal's triangle, what coefficients am I going to get out of this thing? Yeah, one, four, six, four, one. Okay, so I'm going to go A to the four. There's my one. Then four lots of the next one, plus six lots of whoops, the next one, back to four, and then I finish again on one, as I always do. Okay? So that's easy enough. Now, when you look at something like this, the question of greatest coefficient is kind of like, not even a question. It's always going to be the middle one, right? Because that's the way Pascal's triangles, Pascal's triangle works. It's always the term in the middle. Okay? Come in. But here comes my second example. It is not always so obvious. So if I then say, okay, what about this guy? Just pause for a moment before you start to evaluate this, okay? Why is this different? Why is it that it's not guaranteed? I mean, it could be. But why is it no longer guaranteed that the middle term will be the biggest one? Does someone want a suggestion? Okay, because of the three, but so what? Like, why should that make such a difference? Um, yeah. The three could be squared cubed. Okay, good. So the reason why it's correct, the 3 is the problem. This 3 is going to factor in here and here and here and here, right? So here there's going to be an extra 3 multiplied by that 4. Here there's going to be an extra 9, an extra 27, an extra 81. Okay, so if I now go ahead and evaluate these, let's just go with those numbers I just said, right? This is still going to be 8 of the 4, okay? But the next one... Your 4C1 will give you the 4, but then instead of writing B, I have to write 3B, right? So this is going to end up being 12A cubed B. There's a 3 here. There's going to be an extra 9 that comes along for the right in here. So it's no longer going to be 6. It's going to be 6 by 9, which is 54, right? Um, when I get to this point, there's a 27 that comes along for the ride. Right. Okay, 100, 108, yeah? yeah. 108 will be cubed. And then lastly, there's that 3 also gets raised to the power of 4. So that's what I get. Okay. So what you're noticing, what you're observing is, if I've got nothing you know, unusual going on, then it's going to be the middle one. Or if I have an odd power up here, I won't just have one greatest coefficient. I'm going to have two. Why is that? Yeah, that's right. So on the next row of Pascal's triangle, I'm going to get 1, 5, 10, and 10. They're both going to be the greatest coefficient, and then back to 5, back to 1. But here, on an example like this, and basically depending on what these numbers are, depending on what these numbers are, right, what you find is that the greatest coefficient will lean off to one side, okay? You can see this one is leaning off to the right because this term, which is the one on the right, which gets bigger as I go through, um, it's going to get larger and larger and larger until it overcomes what the other coefficients are, okay? So, how do I then make this sort of more efficient? Because I don't really want to always have to write out my entire expansion to find what the greatest coefficient is. Let's think for a moment. You've done questions like this, right? Like say yesterday, um, I asked you to find, oh, in such and such an expansion, tell me what the constant term is, the term independent of x, right? So obviously one way is just to write out all the terms. But that was really inefficient, so what did you do instead? What did you do instead? Yeah, you went to the general term, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, let's um, think about this here. What I'm gonna do is think about the general term here and which one of these is going to be the most useful to me? Now, I actually am, I don't really care about the whole term because sort of see all these A's and B's, they don't matter to me, right? They're the variable part. What I'm really interested in is the number at the front, okay? So I'm going to designate that, this number, I'm going to designate it rather than T of K, which is like the whole term, to K term. I'm going to call it C of K just to stand for the coefficient, okay? So draw up a table for me. The table is going to look like this. Thank you. 
Right, now what I'm looking at here is each of the terms, and don't forget, I, t I start at term zero, and what the corresponding, just the coefficient, what that corresponding coefficient is. So I've just got these, I've already written them down from the previous line, so I have the numbers. Okay. Now can you see, I can write them all out, and then I know, oh okay, at some point, it, gets, it starts to get smaller, so I don't want that anymore, I want to abandon any terms after that. Okay. I know it was somewhere in the middle, but I don't know where. Okay. The quickest way to take advantage of the general term is to say if I compare one term to the next, right? So if you compare successive terms, you want the ratio of successive terms to be a particular kind of number, right? So for example, from here to here, right? If I compare C0 with C1, the ratio from here to here is 12, right? And then the ratio from C1 to C2 is going to be... Uh, three and, no, four. Four and a uh, half? It's four and a half, okay? And then from here to here, it's gonna be two. And then from here to here, it's gonna be, ah, now what happens? It gets smaller, right? So when I compare this ratio from one coefficient to the next one, okay? What do we say these numbers were? So this one is going to be C2 over C1, which is 12. Okay, so I've gotten 12 times bigger to get to the next one. From here to, sorry, from here to here, you're going to get uh, 4 and a half, because that's what 54 on 12 is. From here to here, to get to the next one, I have to double. And then from here to here, um, hmm, they're both divisible by 9, right? Uh, what's that going to be? It's 3 quarters. 3 quarters? Yeah. 84, uh, sorry, 81 on 108. Yes. And then there, there isn't one here because there's no next term. Okay. So you can see what I want is for most of these terms, it's telling me your coefficients keep getting bigger. 12 times bigger, 4.5 times bigger, 2 times bigger. I know it's slowing down, but it doesn't matter to me as so long as it's getting bigger. And then at a certain point, I'm like, no, 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 I don't want that. Okay. That's not what I'm interested in. So if I can get this point, where does it stop? Where does it stop? That next term, that's going to be the greatest one, okay? So here's another way to say it. Um, you know how what we're looking for is for this to be bigger than one. You see once it's less than one, it's like a GP and the terms are getting progressively smaller, okay? What I really want is this. I want it to be greater than one, which of course is just another way of saying if I assume that the constant is, um, sorry, the coefficient is positive, we'll talk about negative ones later on, you can see I can just multiply through by C of K. And this is saying, look, I want the next coefficient to be bigger than your current one. Okay? I want that to be the condition. So long as you find where that ends, that next one will be the last one for which it keeps on getting bigger. After that, you're not interested. Okay? So therefore, put a big box around this guy. This guy here. If you can satisfy this inequality, if you can satisfy this inequality, then, for some particular value of k, in our case, it was k equals 2, okay? If you can find what value of k, the biggest one that satisfies that, then the next one up, you can see it, right? There's k plus 1. The next one up will be your greatest coefficient, okay? So this inequality with this ratio in here, this is where we're going to do our lion's share of work. So now, rather than um, this, which has no actual values on this, let me give you a, um, a proper example. <coughs>